Once again, guys, this is the point to you, John. Very to you. Great morning to you, Richard, too. Right, today is the 7th of October, Thursday. All right, Thursday. And I told you guys that the debt ceiling will be a Wayang show. Now, Wayang, to explain, is the, those Chinese opera, all right, whereby it's all about acting. So what I was trying telling you yesterday, the day before, the day before, I told you that the US debt ceiling will be a Wayang show. It could be a, just a show. And truth be told, last night we saw the movement came in. So apparently the Democrat senator says, okay, you know what? I'll give you a bit more time. Okay. And that propelled the market all the way up itself. And that is what US is always doing whenever they come to this debt ceiling thingy. I have told you before, and I hope that you actually remember that because all of these are highly anticipated stuff. And of course, when this happened, the Wall Street going into craziness, madness, buying up all the way. All right, and of course, Bitcoin went up to 55,000. All right, wow. So we'll talk about this shortly. So you can see that this is what exactly happened. So now you realize that my, my this uh, everyday MAO, I will try to give you the highlights picture of the day. So these are all the highlight pictures so that when you see all this, I'm trying to talk about today, talk about Bitcoin, talk about this, talk about the debt ceiling and stuff like that. Uh, same thing as usual, disclaimer apply. Please understand this. My role is to just basically see the market and give you my best ability. And hopefully you can take advantage of that and make money from the market. Now, let's take a lot of this joke of the day. Now, joke of the day is his name is Bitcoin, referring to the dog. And the friendly neighbor says that, is he friendly? <laughs> and the guy says, sometimes. Okay, what's the joke here itself? You see, when the dog is not friendly, it bites, right? So I'm trying to say that this Bitcoin sometimes itself, it bites you by meaning you lose money. Sometimes it's so nice and so friendly, they're giving you so happy. Okay, that is the, this is how the joke is being translated. But you remember there's one thing for sure, is that whenever China comes in and tell you about, oh, I'm going to do some regulatory, I'm going to regulate this, I'm going to regulate that, Bitcoin will dive down like 5%, 10% for a moment. And then after that, what happened? see again it recovers so what we learn from patterns is that it just keep on repeating so all you do is this put your risk management involved for it properly and then you just have to follow it you understand you don't need to think too much you just have to follow through and get it done so that's why you know when i when we saw that the news about chinese government saying that to regulate stuff like that we mentioned that for those who don't mind holding it for longer term you just have to buy and just keep all right, so let's just do a bit of a recap of what happened yesterday. This is all the key highlights, all right? The pretty decent technical analysis once again. All right, now yesterday I share with you that if the Dow Jones is to go down, you will have to break 34,169 first, and then it will go down to 33,835. And I gave you a specific figure because that is a 95% mark. And I said that if the market hit down there and sell, right, that is a good time to buy back your position. And of course, what happened? Oh my goodness, this is insanity, man. Again, look at it, my friends, look at it. This is not that I'm trying to boast or my to do like, you know, show off, but look at it. The price really came down, hit the level here, which you mentioned, 33,835. And after that, the market really rebounded. Oh my goodness, to this morning. And what is this price again? 33,835 is a 95% mark from the highest point. So I have shared with you this 5%, 10%, 15%, 20% thing is very powerful. And as long as the market do not lose the 33,835, meaning close below it, the market will rebound. And it's all there, all written, right? Yesterday, it was all there itself. Thank you, Brian. Wow, thank you very much indeed. It was a spot on call again on the 33,835. Then, of course, we mentioned about gold. Now, yesterday, I purposely, uh, sorry, yeah, <laughs> but I purposely made you guys uh, write 1748 on gold. Yesterday, I purposely asked you to uh, write this number, 1748. Now, yesterday, you know, right, the, uh, the gold was trading at about, uh, when, you, when we're talking about this, it was 1756. That was where the gold was. And I told you that, 1748 is a very, very technical point. It is something, a technical point there itself. And I say that uh, because we can see that every time when gold hits over there, it seemingly always rebound, right? So this was mentioned to you yesterday. And of course, what happened? You can see that, right? The gold price really, really did this. Oh my goodness. Take a look, guys. Take a look. Now, take a look over here itself. The gold price basically really came down to 1748. 
and then stop there, stop there, around there. Now, of course, uh, I was sharing my friend that I think that 1744 might be traded. And to be told, the low was almost 1744. I think the low was 1745.86, something like that, okay? And then it rebounded. <laughs> oh my God. And it really, really rebounded. So again, the call was pretty spot on, right? Yeah, it is really, really spot on. Thank you guys. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Jerry. All right. Thank you for all this. I need you guys, if you think I, I was spot on, of course, just give me a spot on call and just say congratulations. I'll be more than happy. All right. Because all these are done on MAO, so which means that I cannot lie about it. Okay. I cannot lie about it. And the third one, wow. Okay. This is the one. This is the one. Okay. Highlighted one. This is the Nikkei. Now we are doing live or sharing Nikkei. And the Nikkei, we say that it will go down. Now, the time the Nikkei was trading at about 27,514 back then, it was trading at this figure, okay? And the thing is that I mentioned that um, if it goes down, it will go down to 27,208. And the time itself, it was uh, still of MAO. It was still ongoing. And incredibly, insanely, in fact, the Nikkei really, really dived down and hit that 27,208 figure and rebounded and rebounded wow as if that the market really know that uh, we are watching the figure over there so again three times congratulations to all of you guys okay for those who have made money good job done thank you very much right for minhui richard toming jerry janet anthony thank you for all the comment thank you right okay so like i say you can be lucky one lucky twice but you cannot be like lucky so many times it's all about rules and techniques you just have to apply and uh, try it on your own, okay? And a free Japanese meal. Yes, correct. Don't worry. We were we are arranging it already. But because there's so many of you, right? We're going to we're going to um, do it in stages, okay? So I think Susan has already contacted some of you already. Uh, so we'll go in stages. I mean, every day someone will get free lunches from us. Uh, not at not at one time go. Okay, <laughs> too many. We're doing stages from. So Susan will contact you and then ask for your address that we, you want us to send to. Yes, it will be sent by Grab, depending on where your location is during the time of 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So that's why uh, it will be in stages. I repeat myself. So go slow. We'll don't really chase after us. We'll find, we, we will find you, but we only find you through Facebook, okay? Because your message came from Facebook. So you must check your Facebook Messenger. And also, don't need to chase after Susan. Susan will find you. So if we like, I think about 25 of you. So you go in five, six, five, six. Uh, so you will be cross for one week to complete the whole exercise. <laughs> okay? All right. Thank you very much. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tan. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, oops, sorry. Okay. So this is uh, just a bit of sharing because all these are like not trying to like boast, but it's just to tell you that, hey, you guys can actually also perform something like this. Now, um, our, Hong Kong, our Hong Kong side also do very well yesterday. Our Hong Kong side, people making hundreds of hundreds to even a thousand dollars gain yesterday, like Susan, uh, I think is it okay? And uh, this is uh, one of them. Yeah, yeah. I think they made money like three hundred dollars. This is all US dollar, not Hong Kong dollar. Okay, three hundred and stuff like that. Two hundred plus. So guys, this is really, really happening right now in our Hang Seng group, and it's not like just two weeks ago. Chart is every day, every day, incredibly every day. Students are actually making money from the Hong Kong market. So that's why I, I really think that you guys should come forward, you know, you should come forward and learn and then after that make money from it because this is a really something that you can try, especially now during the COVID time, all right? Consider doing that, okay? Contact King Hua, contact King Hua. He will be more than happy to assist you on this area, all right? Now, yesterday we saw the ADP number. Wow, the ADP number was, wow. Now, the number they were looking at is 428. Previously, it was 340. So they were already looking at about 100, uh, about nearly 80,000 more jobs, right? But the number came in even higher, 140,000 more. So in short, it was 568. And I did ask her to guess the ADP number, right? And it has to be exact, okay? And the price was 9.88 ADA coin, okay? And uh, what happened is that because uh, <laughs> none of us got it, all right, we have uh, close numbers like, like myself, 4433, then uh, Sandy, 456. Uh, I think nearest is PH Tan. Yeah, you are, yours nearest, 477, but it's nowhere near 568, okay? And we say it must be exact, right? So no winners yesterday. There were no winners yesterday. 
So the snowball is going to go up to 12.88 ADA coin. Wow, it's going up already. Keep on climbing, 12.88 ADA coin. Now the thing is that this is the, the impact of the MAO. I want you guys not only to be to come on MAO to learn. I want you to be engaged and I want you to, to practice to understand how macro picture goes, okay? Now, I'm not those uh, trainers who like write new theses and writing about, oh, why market go down, why market go up. To me, all this can find on the internet. What you need to know is really now, what can you do? What should you do as a trader and stuff like that? I think that will be more important than not, all right? So that's why we want you to benefit by actually, you know, uh, participating in this, okay? So that is the whole objective of uh, having this engagement here itself. Okay, so the thing is that we would not have any guessing game today. Uh, today we won't have because we want to reserve it for non-farm payroll, okay? So what happened is that um, today we have initial jobless claim. Now I suspect that the number is gonna be lower. My personal number will be lower. I, let's see whether we happen. I think it'll be slightly lower. Like my personal feel is about three, 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 okay? I suspect that. Okay, it'll be lower. So let's see whether I'm right or not. But today, no guess, huh? so don't worry. <laughs> we'll do it on tomorrow. We'll, we'll do it tomorrow. Okay. Okay, now tomorrow is going to be a very interesting non farm payroll. Okay. Tomorrow, I have a good friend. Okay, I know him for more than 20 years. Yes, no kidding, more than 20 years. <laughs> okay. All right, this guy is uh, Mr. Chin. He will be coming on board to just share his. Uh, Feel of the non-farm payroll, and he will also be uh, giving his view after the non-farm payroll data come out. All right, he's an ex forex uh, dealer. He has been in the market for many, many years. All right, and um, he yeah, worked for many, many banks. All right, so tomorrow at eight ten p.m. Okay, eight ten p.m. We will go live. Now this is only for TWB students only. So which means that right, you have you cannot pass this Zoom link to somebody else, but you can stay at home and watch it with your family members. That's absolutely fine but you cannot pass the link. So what happened is that you will need to turn your webcam on. I repeat, tomorrow you need to switch on your webcam so that we can see you. So if you we cannot see you, then uh, we will have to remove you, okay? So this one is very important. Huh? So tomorrow, 8.10, we will roll out. So at about eight o'clock, we will send out a Zoom link already. So just click on it, 8.10, on, come on board. We will start with chit chat first and Chin will be asked some question and he will just have to share. Huh? All right, he's, he's, and then after that, when the non farm period results come out, as all right, we have another, we'll talk about that, okay? So we're pretty cool. Uh, so everybody, that'll be fun. I'll be streaming the, the CNBC data out also, but it'll be like probably five seconds delay, but it's good enough, huh? okay? Okay, so watch out for tomorrow's uh, <laughs> very nice event, all right? Brought to you by PWB Academy, as usual. All right, so let's just take a look right now on the US market last night. So the US market was basically on the way down, at least it was on the way down until when till the, the senator came in and said, you know what, let's do something with this. And then the market propelled. Now take a look, my friends, take a look here. Imagine that you know that someone here is gonna talk, okay? Or this person was gonna talk, right? Definitely it won't be like last minute. So imagine this area here is all right. It's for all the boys to do the ding dong, ding dong, all the washing up, clearing of stops and stuff like that. Then this particular guy come in and say something and then the market wall up all the way 400 points, just like that alone. 400 points, you know, that's a lot of money, 400 points. So do you think that this is by, by chance or is this a manipulated? What do you think? Do you think that it's coincidence? Or do you think that it's manipulated? All right, give me your answer right now. Is it by, do you think it's manipulated or do you think that it's just coincidence? Please let me have your answer right now. I'll wait for your answer. All right, let's see how many of you can yeah, just participate uh, and see how it goes, all right? Now, Hang Seng is trading higher now, as we can see on the screen, 34,300 plus, okay? Because obviously you can see how the US market re relate and stuff like that, all right? So I'm waiting for your answers, guys. I'm waiting for answer. I get more water. Okay, so what I see here is all Richard, Jerry, Anthony, Eric, Fred, Janet, Gary, Michael, Terry. Wow, all of you are saying is manipulated. Uh. Oh my God, really, uh, Michael also. 
Wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I think that uh, if I if this is like going to be shown to the public, people say, "Oh, you guys are you know, you guys are the nuts." <laughs> All right. But you ask me, yes, I confirm, guarantee you, it's manipulated. I give you the three reasons. Number one. All right. I told you before, history has proven that. They will definitely do two things. They will definitely give you more time. If you check back history, it does that. Then after that, they will tell you that, okay, finally the debt ceiling is going to be taken out. I mean, raised up and then continue. This is not the first time, my friend. This is like probably the, I already lost track of my time about 10, 20 times, okay? Now, number two was yesterday when the Dow Jones came down to 33,835, right? The Dow Jones came down all the way to the 5% mark and stopped there perfectly and rebounded. Come on, man. This is not the first time, not the second time. It's the fifth day in a row. Fifth day in a row. And for people who actually, uh, you know, someone closer to me, uh, they asked me about the Dow. I told them the Dow will go down to that price, 33,835, and it will, it will happen. And true be told, it really go there. That is the scariest part. Okay, the third thing is this, as I mentioned to you itself, right? If you actually noticed yesterday, um, although the, they give the depths, they, they, they paved the way for the depth ceiling itself. All right, 78 times. Oh my goodness. So 79 times. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I read the article 78, 79, but I, I, I didn't really finish, so I don't want to say the number out. Okay, Fred, thank you. 79 times. Oh my goodness. This is America. This is really America. I mean, seriously, I just a joke. Uh. Anyway, um, the, the third thing I told you already, right, is that the 10 year yields, the 10 year yields didn't really go down at all. Let me just bring to you live right now. Let me just give a moment now. Uh. You see, I, I don't want MAO to be like so always the same thing the way we do it. I want it to be very interesting. I want it to be something interactive so that we can learn from it from one another. Okay. So let me bring it to you. Let me bring it to you. I'll take a look now. Can you see that? Okay, hold on. Let me just speak bigger. Okay, you can see that the yield actually was okay. In fact, the bigger a little bit. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, indeed. So you, you, you can see that the yield actually shot up. <laughs> the yield actually shot up, in fact, and now it's raising up again. So all this tells you that it's just basically push, kicking the can down. They know that what you're going to do is really structured already. And of course, uh, you cannot deny this. When the yield is still going up itself, right, the buying of the equity market is just going to be temporary. So that's why I tell you that there's so much money to make every single day. You don't need to like buy the low and sell the high for the like, well, oh, buy at 10,000, sell at 34,000, no need. The entire day itself, you can actually maximize the 400 point yesterday, you have made a lot of money, okay? So that is why I say market is always manipulated. You just have to follow the voice. So that's why we always trade with the voice, okay? All right, oops, oh, huh? this morning, uh, do a good job on my mark my this thing here hold on just sorry let me just adjust a little bit yeah because uh wanna what I did this you know man all right so the Dow Jones was down 450 point at one stage okay it was down 450 point at one stage and then after that it recovers and close up 100 points so what happened so basically, it is because there was optimism that the debt ceiling deal will go through now. So one moment, they were telling you that they wouldn't go through. Next moment, it didn't go through. You see that? That's how the boys play this game. And if you read the news and trade, you're going to be dead. Very dead. All right. And they bought into technology. Okay. So what happened is that Senator Minority Leader, okay, Mitch McConnell, all right, came in and tell the Republican that he would offer a short-term debt ceiling extension later Wednesday. Would offer. So the question is, will he offer? <laughs> yeah, he offered already. All right, so he offered extension, okay? And this would relieve some pressure on Congress to avoid a US default currently expected on October 18. So I don't to tell you this, I tell you that later on, I can almost guarantee you that you will say that, okay, but may not extend it again. You know, the sort of thing they will do. <laughs> And of course, he said that it's to protect the American people from a near-term Democrat-created crisis. We also allow Democrats to use normal procedure to pass an emergency debt limit extension at a fixed dollar, fixed dollar amount to cover current spending into December. Okay, so in short, itself, and they post in Twitter. <laughs> you see that? Now this Twitter itself become like the mouthpiece for all, for social media already. And of course, straight away, we saw Microsoft, Amazon, and all went up. Okay, 
Right. Now, the one that really made me, you know, I just can technically fell on my chair is Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer said to buy the deep... Oh, <laughs> uh, what was he saying yesterday? What was Jim Cramer saying yesterday when I show you the thing itself? Oh, my goodness. It's like, wow. You know, you know what we call it as, you know, the, 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 in, the, the, the pancake itself. <laughs> the, we call it in Chinese, the, the, the you know, we call it in Singapore, roti prata itself. It's like, oh my goodness. He is flipping faster than a speeding bullet. Anyway, he says that now the high growth will work now. If you buy this dip, you, if you see this dip, you buy. Okay, so, okay, anyway. All right, and of course, because of that itself, right, but some stocks still drifted lower. Like, example, American Airlines, JetBlue still went lower because apparently Goldman Sachs says that, right, because of the higher fuel world, definitely the, uh, the airline industry will be hit. And that's, I totally agree with that. So that is why there was a little bit, you know, the Dow will be even higher. All right, so the thing is this, um, October continue to be, uh, October still gonna be a very volatile time. I told you before, October is a very high, the VIX movement is very high. So let's see a VIX and by the way, uh, there's something interesting, let me show you the VIX. Okay, let me show you the VIX now. Here we go. Now the VIX yesterday pulled back, the VIX yesterday pulled back, it went a high of 24. Then after that it came back down all the way because it was 24, I think it was in the, in the part during Asia timing. And then after that, it went down to all the way close to 21. But I can tell you this, you can see from it itself, right? It's still firming nicely at about 21. So my personal take is this VIX at 21, you can try a little bit, try at 21 to buy a little bit because the market has been stabilizing at 21 for quite a while. And my personal take is this likely itself, right? It will go back up again. So my view is that it put up to 28 again, okay? So you can buy at 21. If you want to play it safe, you can buy at 19. If you want to play it very, 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 very safe, then 16, okay? But I, I 19 still got the possibility to tap, lah, but 16 is going to be tough. All right, because you can see the market actually forming its base already. It's a base forming right now. So I suspect that 28 should be the near-term target, okay? So for those who would like VIX, to trade the trade VIX, you can consider doing that. You can trade VIX uh, on AIMS, uh, by the way. Yeah, you can trade VIX on AIMS. Yeah, I'll show you guys uh, later in the ending on the group, right? i show you the AIMS uh, spreads and stuff like that for VIX. Okay, you can trade on that, pretty cool. Okay, all right. So you can see that October month is really pretty volatile. We have the up, then we have the down, with the up, with the down. So actually it's a very trader market. No? It's a very trader market. You just have to buy over here. All right, 33,835. You just have to buy here. Just remember that. You just have to buy here and then you have to sell there. Sell where? About 34,400. You see that? <laughs> pretty interesting, right? Yeah. So it's just about which type of break. Whichever break, it will go higher or you break, it goes much lower. So that's why we just have to wait for the timing. Okay, all right. So let's uh, visit on what happened to the Dow Jones yesterday. The Dow Jones was again beautiful, all right. Now let's take a look. Now the Dow Jones yesterday open price was here. And then after, because the KSI was red in color, so the Dow came down. We suspect you go down to KDR minus one, minus two rather easily. Minus three is always a bonus. Number minus three is always a bonus. All right, so what happened? Wow, beautiful, beautiful, okay. So the Dow Jones basically came down all the way and hit KTR minus three. And of course, after that, it bottomed it and recover all the way to KTR minus one. But again, what we have here is that all these things already, you know that likely what happened. And again, the market, why would the market stop at KTR minus three? What is the number there? There's no support there. It's just that we calculated the KTR by the system. And the market just really go there as if that is just reading a script off from us itself. That is why I say that our crazy system, this our TWB system is really crazy. All right. And of course, you can see that the news was, the market was basically down three quarters of the time. And then the news came in, bang. And that, where, that was where the Dow showed up. Okay. So all shows that the three quarter of time, the market, on that four feet of the time, Four feet of the time the market was down, they probably they basically accumulated a lot. And then after that, it's all right, just for a few hours, we show up the news and then the market goes up, they make the money. It's that simple. It's incredible. It's not, it's very unfair, but this is how the world financial market works. Okay. 
Now, yesterday, gold was a uh, no pivot trading day, right? No pivot, okay? In all the white lines. So what happened is that the gold initially opens here, it went down, all right? It went down. But you know, right, the, KS, the KSI is green. Now, when the market goes down and the KSI on the day chart is green, all right? There's two things you must remember. If you are short selling, when the market go to KTR minus one, minus two, or minus three, you must quickly buy back your position because the KSI is green. You must understand that. If you are long, in a, if you want to long in a market, right, the best way is buy above OP. That's the safest way. But if you're to buy from the bottom itself, right, then the only way is this: you have to wait for it go down to KTR minus one, minus two, minus three. So I ask you a question, guys: if the KSI is green in color to buy and you have a chance to buy do you buy kdr minus one minus two or minus three which one is a better choice please key your answer right now which is a better choice to buy at kdr minus one minus two or minus three all right please key your answer right now okay no price <laughs> okay not everybody got price on huh? <laughs> all right let me know what's your answer okay Yes, correct. The answer is obviously minus three, right? If you can buy a minus three, it will be the best, especially if there's a CCRY there. Wow, this prior, another perfecto answer. So, right? but today, today and I'm not, <laughs> there's no need to do that, but you are correct. Minus three will be the best, okay? Minus two is good, minus three is even better, right? So let's take a look what happened. So yesterday, the gold price actually came down all the way. But just happened to miss minus two by a fraction, a fraction. And then after that, it rebounded all the way itself. Okay, so yesterday, there's no trigger at the KTR minus two. La, so we couldn't really buy. And over here, it's also don't have. So I can, there's no, no way you can buy. So I'm not going to lie about it itself. But you can see there's a KSI jump here. Can you see that? It's a very big KSI jump. This KSI jump was accompanied by basically no blue bar later on. So all the way here is very bullish. This is a very bullish setup. Okay, it's a very bullish setup. All right, very good indeed. All right, so basically it's all right. Uh, for those people who, oh, Hong Kong had hit KTR plus two already, is it? Wow. So how many of you have made money from Hong Kong just now on your own? For those who are in the Hong Kong group itself, you have made money in the Hong Kong group. Please key HK right now. You have made money in the Hong Kong group. Please type HK. All right, let me know. See that how many of you have made money from the Hong Kong group. All right. Wow, hit KTR plus three already. Yeah, indeed, Hong Kong has said hit KTR plus three already. 24,480 level. All right, I'm reading off my handphone itself. So messages again coming in. Wow. <laughs> okay, loads of messages coming in right now. Once again, as usual, we all know that. Wow, okay, people make money. Hong Kong, Eric make money. This uh, Ting Hua had made money from Hong Kong. Congratulations, Susan also made money. So you see guys, these are real stuff. We, well, we are doing MAO here. The other side of guys are all trading with Hang Seng, all right, simultaneously, and they're making money. So you guys should join them, guys. They are really physical friends, really, really making money. It's not like, you know, it just, they're not like, oh, even I Lee make money from Hong Kong. Wow, I Lee, good long, long time no see. How are you? <laughs> Wow, okay, even Eileen is making money from the Hong Kong market, uh, sitting at home, right? Wow, okay, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, all right. So, guys, really, don't, don't, make, don't miss the opportunity to make money from the market, all right? Okay, so let's look at some of the global news right now. Now, what we have in Singapore is that we have yesterday, we have with the day before, we have 3,400, right? Now, to, just the day before, sorry. Now, yesterday was even higher. We have a 3577. Wow. So in two days time itself, we almost have 7,000 cases. I mean, seriously, I cannot, don't, I don't know why, but you know, it, although it's 3,000 cases, it's a lot, you know that, but don't really feel it. Eh? Everybody's still okay. Eh? <laughs> Everybody's still like, you know, as per normal, nothing has changed in fact. 
All right. So of course, there's something there's not people buying coconut, uh, but I think that is a bit crazy. Like you buy the coconut fruit, the, the original, not, not the brand, the one that you know got ice cream one. I think that is really insane. Uh. All right. But again, this is this is how business do might make money. Okay. So anyway, we have interesting thing on going in Singapore right now. Um, apparently, that people are interested in this anti parasitic uh, drug. Okay. In the can't pronounce this name. Sorry. But this is the one that's going right now. Seemingly, there's a good interest, but it's actually a warning sign, right? Please don't do that. It doesn't really help. So don't really go and do that. This is my personal take. Lah. And of course, this is very interesting, although this is trivia, that a guy, the man, the man wants his daughter to take the jet, but the ex-wife doesn't, and then they go to court to fight over this. Oh my goodness. I mean, oh, <laughs> I think that sometimes life is so interesting. All right. So very basically itself, right? The ADP numbers shot up yesterday. That's a fact of the matter. ADP actually went up yesterday, much, much higher. And of course, the reason was there's a lot of creation on the hospitality side once again. So I kind of suspect that, right? This is on private sector alone. Private sector, ADP is private sector. So I cannot deny that I think coming Friday, which is tomorrow, uh, tomorrow ADP number should be even higher and greater. Uh. My personal view is this. Uh, I think that tomorrow ADP number will be even higher than expected. That's my personal view over here itself. And of an NFP figure. And if MMP figure is so powerful and so good, right? So what will naturally happen uh, is that the that will pressure a lot on the tapering of the Federal Reserve very soon. So you understand my point here itself? The higher, the better the numbers in for ADP and NFP, that means that there's no other reason for Jerome Powell and friends to really go for the paper. So that's why I suspect that these two days, the market will go up first because of this ADP and NFP. And then after that, because they want to celebrate, then after that, then they realize that, okay, they have to go to paper and then all these things happen already. So you can see that the, the script is written in this manner. So that's why the Dow Jones recovered yesterday and probably now is going up. All these is part of it itself. And of course, at the same time, when this is all ongoing, you notice that the Bitcoin also shot up yesterday to the five month high. Okay, so Bitcoin yesterday went up by to 55,000. All right, Ether also went up to 3,500 level. Now, I did say that about, I did expect the Bitcoin to go higher, right? And I did say it will go up to 52,000 to 53,000 level. It will be a good level to consider to take some profit. But of course, I was wrong. I mean, I was right to call for the buy, but I didn't I didn't uh, get it correct because we went to 55,000. Because my target was 52 to 53,000. So you see, I'm not perfect, okay? But anyway, for those people who have bought it itself, well, right? Congratulations to you. And again, now, again, the same thing come back again. It says that now that regulatory uncertainty is now going to be like, you know, no longer important. And they say that institutional investors are coming in strongly. Now, notice this every time when the market is down, they don't tell you all this shit. But when after the market goes up really, right? Oh, they tell you this, they tell you that. And then again, people will be like, oh, okay, okay, let's go and buy. And the moment they buy only, it got hit again. So that's why from the trading itself, right? You must always remember this. You When the price comes down, that is where you look for buy for an uptrend market. When the price goes up, it's all right, it's expected. And the price goes to a point whereby everybody calls each other buy and the price doesn't move any higher, that is the time you take a profit. You understand? That is what you should do as a trader and not see then reduce, okay? That's never been that. Yes, correct. It's about distribution, correct? When you when the price comes down, people, the boys will accumulate, they'll give you all the, they'll tell you the facts that they are then selling, could go down lower and blah, 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 and you sell. Then after that, they accumulate enough ready. What they'll do, they'll move the price slowly, slowly higher. And then after that, if they want to get out of the market, they will push it up. Yes, I repeat, they will push it up. Then you may say, why would they want to push it up? Because if they don't push it up, you won't be buying. You understand? They need to push it up so that you will go and buy. That's the whole point. You, they will push it up so that you will go in to buy so that they can sell to you. It's always like that. It has never, never changed. You understand? So anyway, my view is this, okay? They, even this time I tell you that's a big signal from CME. They say that on Wednesday, the highest basis spread, the difference between Bitcoin futures and the spot price says that, right, it's unusual because CME basis normally trail other exchanges. They felt that CME exchange a lowest leverage and then shouldn't be used by traders. So that's why when the spread opened up itself, right, it seemed to be that. Now, if you remember, I posted something uh, yesterday or the day before. I said that Fair Reserve already tell you they are not going to technically ban cryptocurrency. And that already, that again sent the message to people to go in the buy. And of course now they tell you that the macro backdrop is that because now of the 
raising the potential of tapering, rising of rates, inflation, and uh, this uh, debt limit ceiling and stuff like that. So become what? Instead of buying gold, people buy Bitcoin. Yeah, people buy Bitcoin because they think that they will become like a, a hedge to. <laughs> I can only smile. I can tell you that. But truth be told, if Bitcoin wasn't around this time, gold sh should have long time ago already. But because now Bitcoin is around, and the, the people, all the younger generation prefer Bitcoin over gold, that is the reason why you can see gold is just, you know, not really moving while Bitcoin move up. But again, as I said one more time, huh? okay, all right, uh, this, okay, this is where the thing come in. Janet Yellen discussion said was a major reason to buy Bitcoin. So Janet Yellen, okay, I thought she's the one who said that Bitcoin no good. <laughs> okay, anyway, say that, right, okay, if the dollar doesn't seem to be as valuable as crypto. So apparently there's something that, you know, a lot of question mark everywhere. Like, in the sense that people are flipping around their, all the views and making it so hard to follow, right? So they don't follow all these news, just basically buying and trade with the charts, okay? It'll be better for that. All right, so take note of that as usual. Okay, so let's look at some important market information for reference of today because I I think I saved the file wrongly. So I need to just go on, I'll bring it up for you, the data. Wanna? Wait, not this one. Okay, Juana, let's give me a minute. I'm going to bring you the direct source. But this morning, I think I saved the wrong file. Juana? Okay, so let's just go to first. So first of all, uh, investors are saying that they can buy onto Bitcoin for long term. Okay, they say that long term and this comeback is to be for real. So now they tell you for real. So earlier it's now at 50,000, they didn't see anything and 45,000 didn't see anything, right? So what you can see on this particular chart itself shows that the total supply held by the long term holders now apparently the more coins is minted, right? And now there are more people holding it. So they're not gonna sell it. So undeniable, if the guys are not going to sell it, the self demand and supply, it's in a limited supply in the market, definitely price will have to move higher. But again, all these things are actually, uh, you know, these boys are the one pushing it up and down. So there's really no value, in, no intrinsic value, no fair value. It's just that you buy, I buy, you buy, I buy, and stuff like that. So I'm not going to be half surprised later on if someone will say this again and say, you know what? Uh, we have to be careful and there will be some regulation in it and then the price come back down again. It's always like that. But you realize that everything pull back only, it's a very good time to buy as usual, all right? Now, and of course, uh, this uh, this uh, Santoli, he basically says that, right, though, though the market has came out recently, it, it could be a presenting a good time to buy. And it says that, right, the moving average seem, seemingly is beautiful. You can see that. It says that right every time the S&P 500 hit the 50-day moving average is recover, which indeed it really recover as I told you, and also says that now the thing is this the that's rotational play for the oversold uh, condition of the technology companies, and of course energy prices is the one that leading the show, and of course you can also take notice that the advisory service sentiment shows that right when everybody is no longer in a market, it's a good time to look for buying. So now you can see that the, the market is full of bears in the market. That's why the bulls are not there. And that's why you saw the market recover yesterday. So again, it's like a, basically like, like a, uh, a indicator, but it's a reverse indicator to see things itself. So all this information, you can actually like, I'll post it into uh, the uh, TWB news itself. And of course, Jim Cramer okay, came in and says that, okay, let's buy the technology. So again, Jim Cramer now tell you that. <laughs> Okay, but I remember yesterday he was telling the whole world that you know the market is going to go down, don't buy. Today he said buy on dip. Ah, so you see, this is how 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 boys do this thing is all right. So people really change here, change there. Huh? Okay, you see that? All right. Okay, so again, this is what happened. And of course, uh, there are just some of the counters like the Nasdaq counters. Some of them actually now below some critical moving averages, and um, traders are saying that this actually is not so good. But of course, yesterday we saw the Nasdaq recover. So don't you realize that every time when these guys, these boys are calling that sell, 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 making it so bad, so bad, so bad, right? The market just know how to turn up, all right? It's always like that. This is how the world works, okay? So if you think that the world is a fair game, then probably you are still uh, not able to see how things happen <laughs> in life, okay? All right. All right, so that is all, okay? So let's us now look at, sorry, yeah. Okay, let's look at the charts right now. 
the bat the bull goes moo, the bag goes grr, and the lemingo is different this time. Okay, let's go. Okay, so take a pen and paper or your handphone to try to take down some notes so that you guys can benefit from it itself. Okay, ready? Yeah, okay, let's go on. Huh? Okay, so first of all, China A50, this is again, this is not the spot market. This is the ETF and this morning, wow, impressive. Look at this, this morning, very impressive. The market basically gap up and incredibly, you notice that the gap up itself, the opening price exactly meets the MA30. And I tell you that this MA30 is really very impressive. I told you this is a very impressive line. You just have to track on it, okay? And true be told, told this today, the M8 line is here. The market opened exactly a sweet spot and then shoot up already. But now we're having a bit of resistance now. We are having a bit of resistance at this point here as well. You can see that. So as long as the China A50 doesn't cross this technical line, I will suggest trader to book some profit, okay, along the way, because this is a technical line. And of course, if history is to repeat itself, if it's gonna happen, then you come back down again. So traders do take note, under now itself, Evergrande site still got no news. Of course, I think it's going to face the listing soon, eventually they don't get it done. But at the moment now, the market seemingly is not going to care about this. So that's why, okay? So think of this figure here. Now, Hong Kong is a dolly. I told you it's Hong Kong, okay? Now, Hong Kong yesterday did a very nice recovery and all this morning, we, tried, we saw it trading higher. Okay, first of all, Hong Kong age, China, okay, Hong Kong, uh, ma 30 itself is at 24,703. So now it's get it gap up, it's above the MLP. Now remember, I told you before, when the market opens and above MLP, the market is going to be siding towards the buy side, especially if it goes above OP. It's as simple as that. I repeat myself one more time. If the market basically stays above the MLP and it stays above OP, the market is more towards the buy side. So vice versa, if the market goes below MLP and stay below OP, it's all right, it's more to the sell side. So you can see that very clearly now, for now, it's more to the buy side. Of course, generally, the trend has not changed much. The downtrend is still there. But of course, I did tell you that technically speaking itself, right, it's kind of like overdone recently. So buyback of shots was a good advice that I shared with you yesterday. All right, you remember that, okay? So today for technical side, there's nothing much I can share with you on the Hang Seng because it's like both the MLP is so far away, the ME30 is so far away. So there's nothing much to talk about Hong Kong today. Let's look at the Hong Kong chart with a TWB. So not every time you can use the um, conventional to get a view on the market. Okay, let's look at Hong Kong. Uh, yeah, wanna... Okay, there's something wrong here. Okay, so Hong Kong this morning. Wow, so simple day. What a simple day to trade. What do you see, guys? What do you see? How to trade today? Can you take a look? How to trade today? How do you want to trade today's Hang Seng? So simple, right? It's really like, it's as, it's as if we're going for examination and pass you the answers at the same time. You just have to notice this. Today, opening price for Hang Seng is what price? The opening price. Do you notice that? The opening price of Hang Seng today, the opening price is 24,244. Oh my goodness, look at the... Pivot one, the pivot one also 24,244. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wow. Okay. So very simple. Uh, above OP, just buy. Above OP, CCRY, just buy. You don't need even to ask me. You just have to buy. Only thing is this the KSI is green, uh, is red. Sorry. The KSI is red, right? So basically, KTR plus one to KTR plus two, you can take profit already. So that is the simple thing to do. You don't need to ask. You just have to follow and make money. Correct. Now we told you before, right? TWB system is all right. As long as you follow the system, you will be able to make money. And of course, that's why uh, I can see a lot of Hang Seng traders are making money. And wow, Brian, CCRY above OP plus pivot one equals to buy. Wow, TP at KTR plus one plus two, daily KTR is great. Whoa, wow, Brian. Wow, I think you're out to make some coins, right? Wow, oh, this one, I don't give you coin. How can that be? Okay, lah, Brian, because of your great effort, okay? 3.8 ADA coin is on the way. Okay, reward you with 
3.88 ADA coin. Wow, fantastic. Now this is a real perfect model answer that you know you make any make any trade any trainers proud. Okay, great answer there. All right, excellent. Okay, all right. So you can see that that is what you do, right, Brian? This is what you write. Remember, this is what you write. But do you actually make money from that? That is even more important because writing is one, trading is another. So you look at the market on a five-minute chart. If you follow what you wrote there, Brian, then of course you can see straight away itself, this chart shows you a CCRY has already happened. So when the market open, you can already buy. And of course you buy, you take profit at KTR plus one, plus two. So in fact, right, the market hit plus two to plus three almost in the same five minutes. So that means that, right, you may not even have time to sell at plus two because by the time you realize it, already plus three already. All right, but the point is this, the market shows that, and look, you notice this, right, plus three is a calculated figure, and yet the Hang Seng now is stopping here as well, as if that they know that KDR plus three exists in the market. So again, 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 my guys, this is really, really, really incredible. <laughs> yeah, daily MAO become a daily ADA coin collection center in huh? <laughs> All right, now again, why we are giving ADA coin, I told you before, because we really think that ADA coin in the coming future, not, not one month, two months, we're talking about by 2024, it's all right. I still think ADA coin will go up easily to, you know, uh, by this year, it's 350, I told you yesterday, uh, but I'm looking at probably like, probably uh, about $5 to $6, you know, in the next two, two to three years time. So which means that if you're buying ADA coin now at $2, example, and I expect it to be like $6 in about two to three years time, we're talking about basically 200% return. That means that you buy ADA coin at $2 and below, and then you sell $6, right? That means pretty decent, what? 200% return for an investment for two years is a very good deal. Really, it's a very good deal. I mean, of course, we don't talk about Bitcoin, you know, going up like 10,000%, 10, all this thing. We're talking about serious stuff, something that we can keep, and then after that, uh, safe and sound, you know, the doubt feeling, you know? not the doubt, wow, crazy crypto, today up 50%, tomorrow down 40% of that. That one, I don't like. Uh. That one is too crazy for me already. Okay, all right, so that's Hang Seng for us. Okay, that's what I do, the Dow Jones today. Okay, now today, Dow Jones, we have to be aware of objective. Please kind of listen up. Now, the first thing that you must understand that this morning already, I will tell you that today, I give you the tip of the day. The tip of the day is that yesterday, the op today, today's opening price and today low. Do you notice that? Today opening price and today's low is the same price. Oh my goodness, it's a flat bottom. Now, I'm not too sure, have I seen this so many times before at the same time, okay? But really, today is a flat bottom. Wow, okay, flat bottom. Yesterday was a flat top right initially, then now a flat bottom, okay? So what does it tell us? That means that the market today will be more towards the buy side now. And now you can see the Dow is up by 150 points, 160 points already right in the morning. And this is like, a, <laughs> it's like no brainer, all right? You just have to stick to that, okay? All right, so what happened for today? Let's take a look. Now the MA30, please take note. The MA30 now is the market trading above it. So it become a support level. The MA200 also became a support level. So now we have two MAs now have converged and became support level for the Dow. So that's why now the Dow is going to be pretty bullish for time being. Okay, so take note of that. 34,510 would be the MA30 level. And uh, 34,345 is the MA200 level. Okay, got it? Yeah, so what is happening right here now? Uh, wait, uh, one more is MLP. MLP, come, come, come. MLP is somewhere around here. Okay, somewhere around here. Okay, so what happened is that as long as the Dow Jones stayed above 34,510, the Dow will be a buy. Okay, I repeat, as long as the Dow Jones stays above 34,510, the Dow will be a buy. Got it? Yeah. Okay, 34,510, okay? And of course, the support will be 34,345, all right? So traders, as long as the Dow stays above 34,510, the Dow will still be going higher. Now, how high can the Dow go? Well, logically speaking, you can come up with this chocolate bar level, and this chocolate bar is about 34,850, like, around there. So which means that the Dow can go up to here itself if they want to recover, okay? All right? 
Okay, of course, the thing is that it has to stay up, of course. If the market later on, because of whatever reason, reverse and break down, it cannot, it cannot break the OP. If it breaks the OP, then the selling will be double of the upside again. So take note of that. Huh? If the market basically couldn't stay, uh, stay above the OP and breaks the OP, right, then whatever amount from the highest point to the OP, that range, <coughs> excuse me, that, <coughs> excuse me, that range itself will flip it down. Okay, that means that the market <coughs> may actually trade down lower, okay? So think of that, uh, it's going to be important, okay? Very important, okay? All right, so we have the um, Dow Weekly. Now the Dow Weekly is still within the two high, the high and low, uh, the PMB high and low. Okay, can you see that? So it's still within the weekly movement, so I will not cover much. So let's look at the Dow Jones in terms of the... Okay, so today, very important. The Dow Jones today got one more key factor. What is that? Today, Dow Jones got one more key factor. What is that? No pivot, exactly, no pivot. Now, no pivot is not because the system spoiled, it's not because that our, the, the system lousy, because they, that means that the market want to give money to you. When the Dow Jones is the opening price has no pivot, the OP became the pivot. If the market stays above OP, it will be a buy. Below OP, it will be a sell. And today is a flat bottom. So definitely today, as long as the Dow open already, right, you can go for the buy. Yes, the KSI is red. So how? That means that the upside will be limited to KTR plus one to KTR plus two, limited, okay? So if you want to be a short seller, then you want to try to wait for you go to KTR plus one and plus two first, then you can short sell. If you want to be a buyer from the moment it opens, you can buy already because of the flat bottom and also, uh, the it's above pivot one and we follow OP. So you can see that's now right. You have one chance to buy earlier, one good chance is here. This is where you can buy CCRY above OP. All right, there's no pivot. So, of course, you just have to buy and the price goes up. Okay, yeah, very clear, right? So, it's not that difficult to understand the TWB system. You just have to really believe it. That's all. Yeah, and try not to put any like conventional indicator like RSI and stuff like that, unless you know how to apply on it, because you will get easily swayed by it and say, oh, so high already, I think I cannot buy anymore. And then of course, you know, as usual. Uh, so that's why you must understand that to use conventional indicator, you must know how to utilize it. I told you before, right? If you're using RSI itself, right, you only focus on the 30 on the uptrend. You don't focus on the 70s, 80, 90. That one is going to be the one that's going to de delusion you. Similarly, if the market is downtrend, then you look at 70, so that you look to short, and then the 30 is not for you to buy, which again, people will go and buy because they think that it's cheap, and then they get hit again. So every time when I talk about to the right way to use the conventional indicator, right, people just don't seem to follow, and they use the other way, and when occasionally they'll make some money, but eventually they'll pay back a lot later, because it's been proven, I think. All right, let's look at the NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ, wow, beautiful. As you can see, the NASDAQ touches the MA200 MA and then now broke above the MLP and you can see that. And now it's going up towards the 95% mark. Okay, let me just bring it in. All right, so the market basically support itself over here, the BNB SL level, and then stays above the MA200. And then now it's moving up, seemingly going for this figure. And this figure is 14,933, 14,933, and that is the 95% mark. Now, I'm going to say this up front. I suspect that this will happen. I believe that the NASDAQ later on will purposely test this point. Now, whether it stay or not is critical because if it doesn't stay, then I believe it will come back down again. Not today, maybe tomorrow or maybe one day. All right, but if you can cross above the 95% mark, then very, very easily to expect that it will go up to the MA30 level. MA30 level will be like, it's going to go, the upside will be here. And that is about 15,000 level, 15,070. Okay, so that is the level. So NASDAQ is expected to go up to 14,933 to just step on it 
and whether it's going to be followed through by up, uh, we won't know. But if it doesn't, then I believe that the market will pull back down. Because I can, as I said to you, right, as long as the interest, the 10 year yield is going up itself, right, NASDAQ will definitely will not be in the favorable position. But of course, at this junction here itself, I told you yesterday, the market is still very bullish. And every pullback itself, right, people are going to buy the dip because they think that it's going to be safe. But you must understand something very important. Uh. Let me just show this thing with you now, everybody. I'm showing you now. Please listen to what I need to share in the next two minutes. You must understand that this is the highest point. Then it came back down. It went back up again. Then it came back down again. And now it's doing this. Okay. Now, the thing is that every time when the market hit a technical point, the market recovered. So we understand that. But you must understand also, right, when the top, when the, at the highest point, it says this is 100. Now, the price here is, let's say, is 90. Then now, the price here will be around 80. So, of course, from one look at it, it's like you're going to buy it cheap. But you look carefully, it's all right. Every time the recovery itself is lower than the previous cycle high. And this is not a good sign because that means that those people who got caught from 99 to 90, they are caught already. And now people who are caught is from 90 to now probably 80. You understand? So which means that, right, many people are caught at a higher price itself, although the each rebound, it did come in technically. So the people have this mindset that, okay, don't worry. Don't worry. All is safe one. Okay. As long as we follow through, we buy it. Right. But the thing is that if each wave itself, right, it gets actually uh, lower, that's a problem. And do know that, I repeat, uh, no market will crash. I repeat, there's no such thing as market crash uh, at the highest point. Market usually turn down when it's off like five to 10%. So which means that the market has to come down to 10, the 10% mark, then after that sweeper, uh, then if there's going to be any big sell off, it will usually come in at the, after 90%. So market will not crash off from the highest point because there will be a lot of buyers who think that the market will go higher. So you don't, don't expect a market crash so soon or crash will happen just like that. Unless it's, a, it's like a 911, then it's a different thing altogether. You got my point. So I repeat to you, market do not crash at the highest point. Market sell off in the middle part, which is like the 90th percent to the 80 percent, the 70 percent, that area. You got my point? All right, unless it's a pandemic, unless it's something that's, something that's very different. Yeah, uh, something that is like, whoa, it's a global thing, like the 911, uh, then maybe you can just turn off just like that. But if not itself, right, don't expect that that happen, okay? This one you must understand, huh? Okay, so for NASDAQ, I already share with you my view on the NASDAQ. I also tell you that looking at how do you uh, look out for buying entry for the NASDAQ. Okay, NASDAQ day chart today. Well, NASDAQ day chart is also very clear, but it's an inverse pivot. Hey, wow, inverse pivot. Now, inverse pivot means that the, the pivot is very sensitive. That means it will be very powerful. So in short itself, right, NASDAQ, as long as it stays above OP, as long as NASDAQ stays above OP, NASDAQ is a buy. And true be told now, it's happening right now. And because the KSI is green in color itself, right, it confirms it higher. Now, the only thing is this, just take note now, as long as market stays above OP, no problem. But if the market later on, if let's say breaks down and go below P2, right, uh, then the selling will be fast and furious, okay? But because the KSI is green in color, right, the downside will still be limited to minus one to minus two. All right, for the NASDAQ, even if you come down. For upside itself, right, you can aim for this uh, higher level at like plus one, plus two easily, okay? Oh, I'm seeing Hong Kong coming off a little bit. I think this has crossed Hong Kong for a short while. Let's show it to you from here. Wanna? See, I told you, right, look at it. I told you the KTR plus three, you see that? Once it couldn't stay above KTR plus three, you notice that the market really peel off. You see that exactly that to you. Why Hang Seng will stop at KTR plus three? We are sitting here in Singapore. The people are trading in Hong Kong. There are, there are, there are thousands of people trading in the Hang Seng Index. How come we know that the KTR plus three here will stop here? Don't you find it really very eerily insane? You're having a system at home itself that really that the big mark, the big boss is following it. So the question is, is the big boys following us or we follow the big boys? <laughs> okay, so that is a very, this is just an intriguing thing, but I'm just very impressed to see this right now. And we just now say, right, if the, if the Hang Seng is to go up, right, it will be limited because it is still a KSI that is, you know, a KSI that is red in color. All right, so again, this shows you up. So if Hang Seng is to pull back down, uh, I'm kind of like pretty 
sure that you come down to at least a KPR plus one, uh, it should happen rather easily if it comes down. Okay, all right, let's continue. Now, S&P 500, as I told you, S&P, wow, look at the, the, the tail. The tail just came on like a dagger, smashing into the, stabbing into the uh, MA 200. And every time it stepped on it, the market rebounded. So as if that the market knows that this MA 200 exists. Now, of course, I say a lot of people are using different terms. Some use SMA, EMA, you know, doesn't matter. As long as you choose one that works for you, that is more important. You see, that is more important. Okay. All right. So let's do a simple recap. Let's look, focus on the red line. Okay. We'll do a quick recap on yesterday's market. Okay. Let's focus here. Okay, so you can you can see pretty clearly, right? The market did this. Okay, the market came down all the way, hit the hit the um, ME, I mean the ME two hundred, and after that went down a bit. Then when you recover, you notice that it began to it began to play around with it, and of course this is a very clear touch the tail. The tail went through it and then recover. And of course, after that, the net the S P showed up. So again, tells you very clearly that if you know where the levels are, you will know what to do. And of course, right, okay, if you have the uh the T W B basic, ah, uh, that'd be fun, right? I mean, you can actually see the market really forming a base here, and the color change turn around, right? That makes you a better buy. And that's the reason why we are trying to push ourselves to get it up for you A S A P. Yeah, okay, pretty cool stuff coming up soon. Really. Yeah, a bit more time a bit more testing and we are ready to go, okay? All right, so this is S&P 500. So for S&P 500 today, let me just share with you. S&P 500, as long as stable MLP, it should be able to go for the MA30 here itself. And that's 4403. All right, if the NASDAQ goes up, right, we keep 4403, should be rather easily. And later on, we do have the German DAX coming in. So again, there might be some, there might be some push up all towards that itself. So watch out for that. Okay, so pretty safe that today, uh, if the S&P is to go higher, 4403 will be the resistance that we're looking out for. Okay. All right, crazy system, make the boys want it to. <laughs> oh, how I wish, if one day we can sell this for like, like maybe for 20, 30 million dollars. <laughs> okay. All right, let's continue. Um, SMP. Okay, so this is SMP day chart. Oh, another simple chart, simple as that. This is even better. This is even better, much, much clearer. The market opening price is already above pivot one, and the KSI is green. Wow, confirmed by CCRY above OP, confirmed by classic trades. All right, so if you look at the 15 minute chart right now, now when you see classic trade, you don't need to wait for the GTH hours, I can just follow through. Oh, okay, until now, no chance to buy it. Okay, because all the way is yellow bar. <laughs> all the way yellow bar. No, I don't have a chance even to buy. Okay, so how, hell, can we just buy on basis of this? Well, if you don't really buy, you're buying above OP, like that's the minimum. Then of course, your stop loss, you put anywhere you prefer, but this is not part of TWB system because there's no color change. But you insist to buy, then at least you buy a verbal pill. At least it's, it makes more sense. All right. So that is the SMP under now no CCRY. So later on, if the price do pull back down, a CCRY will be a very good time to buy the SMP 500. Okay. So take note of that. If the price later pull back down, do look out for CCRY to buy. Okay. Do look out for that. Huh? Okay. Okay. Dex. Now DAX yesterday, you know, look at the long tail. And I told you yesterday on DAX, I say that this is a very technical level that I told you it will be a very important support. That number is 15,029, uh, remember? I told you right, this figure 15,029 is a very important technical level. And because it happened to always do the support. Can you see that? So yesterday, again, it happened. Wow, the DAX actually slammed down almost 200 points first. Okay, and then it recovered very strongly to close up. So likely later on, there'll be some follow through buying also later on. Right, so for DAX today itself, right, I believe that it should be able to go up to this point here. 
and that's a 95% tau level, and that's 15,231. So I'm kind of like confident to say that later on, if tax open, right, it should be able to tap 15,231. But there's something to concern, uh, hold on, uh, it's a but here as well. If you notice carefully, right, this is the MA200 and MA30. You notice that if this is the, if the market basically continue to go down for a few more days, the MA30 will cross below MA200 and this will create a death cross. Of course, the death cross, if you wait for death cross to sell, it will, it will be silly because the market is selling since here, right? But the point is this, undeniable, the algorithm will kick in and then there could be a spillover of movement. So that's why I say this recovery is all right. You're gonna buy to you're gonna buy from the bottom to make some money, fine. But if you're gonna buy to keep for long term, right? I tell you be very careful because the overall market is still is still on the downside. Because you must understand the current party now, Angela Merkel is all right, it's gonna be out, and the market now down there is a bit uncertain. And of course, the UK prices is up, the UK uh, fuel prices is gonna hit Europe accordingly, and of course, Germany will not be spared. So overall, it's all right the market could see some more selling. So any pullback itself, right? Any recovery, right? Could be a, it will serve a good time for people to unload further into the market. Yeah, so do think of that, huh? okay. All right, so after uh, that we look at Nikkei. Where are you Nikkei? Here we go. Now Nikkei is recovering today. Nikkei is up today. Yesterday went down to our 27,208, beautiful. We give a very beautiful call and it really, really happened. Congratulations to those who got it. Okay, so now for today's Nikkei, let's take a look, okay, guys? Okay, today MA, MA200 is here, MA30 is way on top, so overall, it's still pretty bearish for now. Now, Nikkei is still bearish for now, so MLP is where we are, you know, and I think there's some form of resistance there, MLP. 27,953, it seems to be kind of like resisted down here at the moment. So meaning that if the Nikkei cannot stay above this figure, Nikkei may pull back, okay? It may pull back. But if we can cross it, the upside should be at MA200. I don't think it will happen today, lah. all right? At least we know that now it's stop, it's stop, why it's stopping there as well because of the MLP, all right? So these are all the important information that you must know as a trader so they can benefit of it. All right, let's look at the uh, Nikkei daily chart for today. Now today, Nikkei daily chart itself is showing us that, oh, very nice. Yona is above pivot one. Oh, that's why it should up, okay? Above OP, ma. above OP, above pivot one, KSI green, wow, definitely it's a buy. Okay, definitely it's a buy. So we look at the CCRY chart, beautiful, man, beautiful. The market came down first, then after that, the market goes up, CCRY above OP, above pivot one, KSI green, wow. See that, simple money, right? Straight away, three KTR given, KTR one, two, three all given. Very nice. Again, shows the power of the TWV system. As long as you know what to do, I found the script is there, follow through, make money. Simple, Japan. <laughs> okay, all right, I finished all the equity market. I'm gonna go to commodities Commodities right now. Let's look at gold, standby for those who are gold buck. Now gold, mm, how? Well, same, nothing have changed in the way exactly was. You can see the chart tells you all already. Okay, so let's just, again, stay objective. Uh, I know that some of you are being like, you know, play around by gold, you get pretty really upset and pissed off. But gold have not changed its main movement. Okay, let me explain this to you why. You see, uh, gold uh, has been coming down for the last three times. And each time it hit the 1748, almost every time it rebound. Okay, right, every time it rebound, in fact. Okay, so you know that if gold go down 1748, it's going to be important. Okay, so first thing, think of that. Number two, do you notice that every time the gold go up itself, right, it will be resisted at the MA30. So the MA30 became the resistant, okay? The MA30 become resistant, okay? Which is now today will be 1765. Okay, so how do I read this? How am I gonna read this? I think I think you guys have already got the feel already, right? Okay, number one is that, you know, MLP, where is it? Okay, here we go. Number one is that if gold stays below MLP, today's MLP for gold is 17, Six one. 
Okay, one seven six one. Okay, so simply put yourself right for um for this goal. As long as go stay below one seven six one, okay. If go stay below one seven six one, go will likely be coming down again. Go will likely be coming down again to where to the one seven four eight level. It go back. It will come down to one seven four eight one. Wait, sorry. Wait, give me a minute. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's one minute, something from my charger. Okay. This one. Ah. Yeah. The, the, the adapter got problem. Yeah, no, it's okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, where are we? Okay, so um, today goal will likely still have to come down to again test the 1748 level. Yeah. So I cannot deny this. 1748, in my opinion, will still be tested again. Why late? Because it couldn't go past the MA30 level, which is now today is 1765. For gold to really go up, it must cross and close above 1765 today. As long as gold cannot stay above 1765 today, gold cannot go up. Simple as that. Okay, take note of that. Huh? So everybody, please key 1765. Just to remember that about it. If you are a gold trader, just key, just key 1765. So that you know that gold must cross 1765 for it to go higher. If not, gold will still stay here as so, well. Okay. Now, Cal, is it 1764 is a very safe price to buy for gold? Well, look at the chart. They've been showing it pretty clearly. All right, every time you hit the 1748, the gold price actually rebounded. Lah. So you just watch out for it. Lah. So remember, 1765, 1748, two number. Later we'll see the, the date. Then later we see the TWB chart, right? Then you could see something interesting. Now, I didn't do any uh, preparation here, but I just got this tingling feeling that we may see something very interesting later. Okay, so Richard, Terry, Gary, Eric, Fred, Janet, uh, you all remember 1765, very, very important level. And remember, it's not only touch, uh, you had to cross and stay above, uh, that's very important. Okay, so now everybody, you can see first, uh, pretty clear on the chart here. First of all, you can see that today opening price is between the two pivot. The KSI is green, blue bars are there, but not, not that, it's a bit of bearishness, but still not so worrying but how come the price coming down because as long as the market don't stay above op right you cannot buy anything okay you cannot buy anything you have to stay down all right so for people who want to buy gold now you know the ksi is green right so you can aim for kdr minus one minus two or minus three let it go there first hit the bottom and then recover then you buy you got the idea yeah okay now remember the two numbers i told you just now right i repeat that i didn't do any form of preparation work prior to this but I got a feeling that we may see something interesting if I put the two numbers in. Okay, hold on. Uh. Okay, let's put the first number. The first number is 1765, right? Okay, the one that you, we talk about it, 1765, okay? See, the moment I put in, right? Eh, how come yesterday's high is 1765? Okay, interesting, huh? Okay, next number I'm gonna put in is the, the support level, right? And that's 1748. Okay? Yeah, okay. So eh, after that, you realize that eh, uh, this is the level of support is right. Uh, okay, now you got an idea. Okay, so now we change this to a 15 minute chart. Okay, 15 minute chart. Now again, I repeat that I did not prepare anything here, but just got this tingling feeling that we may see something interesting here itself. Now everybody take a look. What do you see? Ah, now become a bit clearer, right? So what do you see now in the chart? is that if the goal is to come down, it's kind of expected for time being. There's a KTR minus one and the TSCB here itself. This is gonna be the first very important support that goal has to stay. And you realize that the 1748 is the exact, is almost nearby our KTR minus two. So this is a stack. This is a stack here itself at KTR minus two. So we know that the day chart KSI is green in color. We know that today 174 is a technical support level there. 
So if let's say if gold price is to go down, right? If it goes down, right? It will actually hit this point and maybe that will be the best time to buy gold because it's a stack and it's also a technical at the same time. You got my point here so So that's why I tell you this. But of course, if let's say later on, something crazy happened and then the market suddenly shoot up example, right? So you can see that once, once the market crosses 1765, that means that it will break yesterday's high and it will go up and it should be able to pierce to 1768. Now 1768 is very nearby. It's only like $3 away from the 1765. So if it goes above OP and above pivot one, right? And the KSI is green, this will bring the goal even higher later. So today, I was kind of thinking that today or today itself, right? Gold may have a bigger movement. Okay, gold may have a bigger movement. I don't know which side you go first, but I know that if the number, if the market goes to any part of this A is here, or you go to B, or it cross C, okay, C, huh? Okay, I will know exactly what to do. You understand my point? So everybody, take a look at this A. Take a look at B, take a look at C. Okay, these are three points to look out for gold today. If you need to take a picture now, take a picture and make sure that when those things happen, you know what to do. Okay, I'll give you uh, some time to take a picture of this. All right, 10 seconds. Okay, so make sure, make, make sure you take this picture. Whatever, whenever it happened there, you know what to do, okay? All right, cool. Okay, so that's gold. <clears throat> Let's look at silver. <clears throat> silver yesterday came down to $22.28, and then after that it recovers strongly, created doji. Now, silver, um, people asking me, Cal, can we buy silver and keep? I already told you, $22, okay. 21, even better. 250, lah, even better. So as long as you're accumulating silver between $22 to $20, right, this range is a very good range to, to collect, okay, to collect. So don't need to keep on asking me the same thing over and over again. You just have to remember this, that this is the very important point for you to look at silver now. If you're comfortable to keep some silver at this point here itself, just accumulate, okay? Don't buy a lot, just accumulate some. Maybe like a couple of it, then I just leave it alone. And only if the price has to go past, like say go to $23 and above, uh, then we slowly do the on position. Because my view is this, if gold price can go up, okay? I told you before, right? If let's say my, my target for gold is still 2218, then I told you, right, my silver target minimally is 36. Uh. Okay, so now it's 22, my target is 26. Now gold is at 17, uh, now price 1760. Now silver is at $22, all right? So if gold price can go from 1760 to $22,218, right? That's in terms of percentage, how much is that? Huh? Okay, can you calculate for me? Then of course, if you look at it again, right? Uh, the silver should be able to go up here itself rather easily. Now, the thing is that um, people ask me, Kel, if the gold go to new high, right? Why the silver cannot go new high? Well, it's not that it cannot go high. The new high will be $50, but it's just that silver itself uh, is not a real demand in the market. So that's why I don't think, other than speculative reason, right? There's no reason why silver should be at $50. Ah. So about $22, you buy to aim for $36, that's already almost 100% gain, right? Yeah, pretty safe. So that's why I still think that it's a pretty good bet to buy some silver to keep. Yeah, buy some silver to keep. Okay, all right, let's look at crude oil. Now, crude oil, beautiful, man. Look at it, beautiful. Yesterday, I told you, don't ask me why do I feel it. I told you that yesterday, I believe that the crude oil will come down. Remember, I told you that yesterday, when the crude oil go to $79, I said that people will call for buy, but I am calling for sell. Remember, for those who remember that I said that I'll call for sell in Bit, uh, crude oil, please key spot on crude. All right, if you remember that I said this yesterday. Yeah, yesterday I said this, okay? And I told you that, uh, don't know why, but this is when people all call for buy, usually the opposite will likely be happening and true be told, it happened. Okay, so for crude oil itself, right? Remember uh, about BNB, right? So yesterday crude was a BNB on its own, okay? On its own. And uh, if it's BNB, then that means that crude oil should be coming down to this point here already. And this point will be 70, 
$3.57, okay? All right, thank you, Susan, Richard, Jerry, Eric, Fred, Anthony. All right, you guys remember, huh? very good, thank you. All right, now, if you look carefully, crude, huh? everybody focus. Huh? When crude breaks the RL, you can see that eventually it hit the one time one. Breaks the RL, hit the one time one. And every time you hit the one time one, you realize that it pull back, it pull back, right? So does it work the same way? Yes, of course. So which means that if let's say now if the crude oil goes down, then I think that now it's at seventy six dollars and forty seven cent, right? I believe that crude oil will come down to seventy three fifty seven cent. It will come down to here, and then after that, after it hit this point, it will bottom up and then maybe go back up again. So traders take note seventy three fifty seven is the level that I want you to take note for crude oil. Now if crude oil goes down itself, we do expect to see. Uh, usually the equity market come down a little bit, yeah, because of the crude oil stocks. But of course, now market is saying that because the market is going down because of the energy prices, so may may not happen. But I'll just follow the chart. So I believe that crude oil will come down to this point. I believe in my technical. So if we come to this point, it will be a pretty good time to buy crude oil. I repeat, it could be a good time to buy crude oil at seventy three fifty seven. But of course, you must stay there. Huh? You must stay there first. Okay, if it crashes down then the next figure for crude oil could be as low as $68.40. Okay, that's if, let's say, it crashes off, which I don't really think so. But a pullback to 73.57, I'm pretty confident, all right, if it actually stays down. Huh? Okay, so if you look at the uh, today's the TWB chart on the crude oil, hold on, huh? let's just bring it in. Now, I'm probably the Singapore most comprehensive trainer who covers so many markets. I know that sometimes you all have listen to me until you all get so tired. I understand that. Okay, It's not easy talking to the end of for, for, for four and a half hour. Okay, Because I don't see a response. So your communication online itself is going to be my best way to you know make myself awake. Okay, so today you can see why am I calling for sell. Again, I did not see the chart earlier, but now it confirmed my, my feeling. Is that right? The crude oil today opening price is below pivot two, and now it's trading below P OP, right? But because the KSI is green in color, so that's why the downside could be kind of limited to KTR minus two maximum. So traders just think of that. And with the BNB, the market itself, right? Usually this is a big boy price. If the market doesn't want to go up, it will come down first for a while. Then after that, they cover again. A BNB is always a good time to tell you that, hey, the boys are in already. Whichever direction you want to go, you just follow through, okay? So that's why we have to know the BNB. Okay, last two charts before we wrap it up for today's MAO. Let's look at the Bitcoin. Okay, Ethereum first. Now Ethereum, well, Ethereum is still doing the same thing. Ethereum is still doing the same thing. Uh, Ethereum is still hovering at about 35th level. At 3500 level, I tell you for Ethereum, we are somewhere near the resistance at 3569, right? I told you. So as long as Ethereum cannot stay above 3569, right? I still think that Ethereum will take some profit soon. So traders, it's all right. Do not the KSI is still red, although there's no blue bar. So that means that the market still got a lot of buying interest from the bottom, but the interest may not be strong enough to push it up higher. So I still think that if Ethereum cannot cross 3569, Ethereum will likely take some profit. Okay, this one is my Ethereum view. But Bitcoin, I'm totally wrong in a way. I was right in the buy call, but I'm wrong in terms of the target. Well, my target was 52,000. Well, it didn't only stop there, it went higher. So now I have to take away all my lines first to withdraw everything properly. Yeah. Okay, so remember I put a Fibonacci into the Bitcoin, right? So 61.8 is when it's supported. Now 50%, 38.2, and now cross above. So logically speaking itself, right? The next target itself it should be going for is 56,000. 56,000 is actually the um, next Fibo number, which is the 23.6, okay? This is the next Fibo number, 56,000, okay? So... It might be going there because of what you're saying. Okay, just that I kind of think it's overstretched already. The KSI is green, but no blue bar. So all of these are still very bullish sign. So I suspect that it could be a tap and go, meaning it may tap 56,000 to hit a fever and then come back down again. It might be doing this. All right. For those who are very long in crypto, I mean, Bitcoin for some days already, you just have to put an SWL position. I'm really not keen to buy 
in the Bitcoin at this stage right now because upside is only 1,000, downside itself can bring it back down to, I, I, if you're going to bring it down, I think you're going to come out to 51,000 again. So maybe at 51,000, maybe just for the sake of buying, you can buy some over there later, not now. Okay, that's my view, lah. up to you to, to decide. Okay, all right. So that is the Bitcoin, Ethereum and all. Okay, so that will be all for today, MAO. Thank you for watching. Uh, 